What's up guys, welcome to Daily Refinement. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about why a lot of small eBay sellers are actually leaving the platform. So please smash the like button, and consider subscribing. We'll see you guys inside. I have to make this video because a lot of people are getting easily discouraged and I didn't really know why. So I actually had to Google why people get discouraged in the first place. It's actually because their expectations don't meet their reality. So I think that a lot of people have this misconception that they're missing this one thing, that if they do that one thing, their sales will suddenly be really good or really fast. But the reality is that it's lots of little things all combined that make your sales really fast. So it doesn't make sense to have a knee jerk reaction when something doesn't work and write off the whole thing. Like here's an example. Somebody will write on a YouTube video and say, I listed every single day and it didn't work. So then you might think, wow, I, I've been trying so hard to list every single day. This person tried it and it didn't work for them. So I'm not gonna do it anymore either. And it's not correlated to what you're doing. It's just an easy way to not do that one. So I actually don't look at anything with expectations. I just test it. And over a long period of time, I'll have a large sample size. So one of the benefits of having a group of 2000 people who resell full time in it is people can share things like, here's an example. When you delist, relist or delist sell similar. I did not say that eBay will shadow ban you. That's something that somebody else said, right? I replied to a comment in a video and here's the evidence. When you list an item brand new for the first time on eBay, eBay does not know what the item is. Fresh pictures, fresh title, fresh item specifics, fresh price. It gets assigned an item number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a number for your item. If the item doesn't sell, right? And you end the item and sell similar, it will get a brand new, it will get a brand new number. So now instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe it's two, six, nine, four, 12, 13. Totally different number, right? But eBay has a record of those photos because each photo has a signature. The title has a signature. The items have a signature. That's how they actually catch people who are stealing or copywriting upon things. So for example, if I put in this video some copyrighted music, the algorithm would automatically pick it up. So in our group of 2000 people, people have tested D-list sell similaring their entire store. So let's say they had 200 items, they delisted the entire thing, sell similar, 200 items going to their store. We track the traffic in our store and from the evidence from our group, we are seeing that people get about 20% of the traffic that they would if they just listed 200 fresh items. So is it the same as listing 200 brand new items? No, somebody who lists 200 fresh items on eBay will get more traffic than somebody delisting 200 items and relisting the same 200 items. So in eBay's eyes, right, you're saying that eBay has 200 new item specific numbers going onto their website, it's 200 different numbers, but eBay already knows that these specific 200 items already had a chance on eBay and didn't perform that well. So they'll give it some traffic, but not all the traffic. So people doing this experiment have concluded with large sample sizes, Selling 200 fresh items is a better use of your time than just refreshing 200 items. Does it mean that as a shadow ban? Who cares? Does it mean that eBay is penalizing you? Not really. Here's another example. People will always ask, is eBay penalizing me? I had a really good sale. I sold a $1,200 pair of shoes and eBay's like, you know what? This guy only normally sells a thousand items. So we're just going to not give him any more sales the rest of the day, just to even it out. So everybody gets the same number of sales. This is not true. What happens is you end up selling your better items first. This is always the issue. People will list 20 items, two will sell right away. Nothing sells for a week. They think eBay is broken, but your two best items sold right away. That's why as I mature as a reseller, I'm moving away from filler items and I don't want to sell items that are under my profit threshold, which is my goal of $20. I want to make $20 profit per item now. I have to quote this because I'm going to mention it over and over again. This quote from Maya Angelou. She said, do the best you can until you know better and then do better. And this is really game changing for me because right now I don't have the knowledge that every single item I pick up, every single lot I buy, every single purchase I have is a $20 profit or more. It just means I do the best that I can with what I have until I have that knowledge. So me personally, I just listed 35 items on Poshmark. I'm going to list on Poshmark until I get my eBay account back. The first week I sold 24 of the 35 items. I have 11 left. I looked at those 11 items. This should be to no surprise to anyone listening right now. 
they're the worst 11 items. These items are not the right colors, they're not in season, it's summertime right now even though it's a little bit windy, and the items that are selling are the items that are spring, sandals, shorts, sneakers, things that you can wear outside to an event. The boots, the heavy fur stuff, it's not selling and it's because it's the wrong season. There's a reason why your items don't sell right away and it's not because eBay or Poshmark or Mercari is broken. If you've been selling for longer, in a, longer than one year and you still blame the platforms, shame on you because there's so much that you can do to go in there and improve your listing. So we've actually modified our mentorship group, which you can find at patreon.com slash the resource podcast. Every single Monday now, we are going to focus on what did you do that's helping you reach your goal. I don't want to hear any more excuses. I don't care anymore. I want to know why you can do it. So the reason why I was able to sell 24 out of 35 items the first week is because I was in there looking who else is selling these items for how much. What does mine look like? Is it the wrong size? Is it a good size? Is it a bad size? I have some Sorel boots that I'm okay waiting a year to get all the money because they're really nice military boots that are hard to replace. Of all the items I sold, that was the hardest one to find. I want a really good profit for that item. A pair of beat up sneakers that are running shoes, you can find those anywhere. Those are not special. I will accept any reasonable offer. So for me, I'm thinking I want to move filler items, which I consider anything under your average sale price that you're looking for, I'm sorry, everything under your average profit that you want. So let's say you're aiming for 20. Anything under 20 is filler. Doesn't mean filler is bad. I'm not voicing my opinion. I'm just saying that if every item you purchase was over 20, your average sale price would grow. And I'd rather you have a store of really valuable items that you can discount and move because I'm finding that in my store. The garbage items I have listed for $11, they're not selling. Somebody offered me $4 and I considered accepting it this morning because I thought I made a mistake buying this item. And it's not very good, it's damaged, not in good shape. So I'm thinking maybe just cheap sell it. I'm considering accepting this $4 offer because I don't want to store this item. So I may not get another offer on this item because the item is damaged and I shouldn't have picked it up in the first place. So maybe just take the L, move it out of my store because I'm now building a Poshmark closet right now out of a 225 square foot spot and it's going to be able to hold 2,000 items but it's going to be way more comfortable in that space if I only have 1,000 items listed. So I'm just thinking to myself, I would much rather spend more time thrifting, more time driving, more time looking than walking through my space in a really cluttered, tight area. So I'd rather have really good items in my store and just force myself to spend more time on the road than to just squeeze what I can out of the local thrift store. There's actually a St. Vincent de Paul within walking distance of my warehouse. I could walk over there and try to find all the items, but it's gonna be garbage because it's impossible to pull 70 really good items from that thrift store in this area. It's not gonna be the best. But if I have a route that's 15 different stores in the Bay Area, I'm gonna run into 70 really nice items that I'm proud to put into my store. Also, in my own defense, I'm buying shoes at the flea market and it's pitch dark. So it's very difficult to look at the condition of the stains on the item. So I'm ba basing all of my purchases based on brand and model and size. So this is something also really important. Most of the shoes that I haven't sold in my store are sizes six and seven. And the eight, nine, 10, 10 and a half, those shoes are all sold. They sold much faster. So I'm starting to improve my Rolodex. So in the beginning, you guys need two things. You need effort and you need knowledge. If you have an effort problem, please let me know. You probably don't have enough reasons to really kick ass, but for me, like, I don't want any prisoners. I want to kick ass. I want the most out of my life. I want to do the most that I can. I'm not looking for least. I don't look for what's the least that I can do. I don't want to barely pay my bills. I want my bills paid forever. So I'm looking at this like I'm building something really powerful, building something that outlasts me. Hopefully you can give your kids something other than an eBay store that they're just going to directly drive the goodwill. Like on my plan right now, if I get hit by a bus, literally my store just gets donated or call a couple of my reseller friends. They come in, sell what they can and the store closes. Ideally, I could have something that outlasts me. I don't know how to mix it so my liquidation company continues without me and I don't know how to make my Poshmark closet slash eBay store continue without me, but I want to look at it like a business and not like me operating it forever. Um, so that being said, if I do get my eBay store back, which you talked about this a few times, I am gonna do 30 listings um, a day in my garage by myself and the plan is for that to do it forever. Um, in that scenario, I actually would just shut it down if something were to happen to me. But here at this warehouse, it's a lot more expensive. There's a lot more things to think about. I really do want something that maybe will last beyond me. 
So something to think about, something for you to think about, but I don't want you to get easily discouraged because we're talking about lifetime goals here. Lifetime goals of, of reaching a full-time income, not next week, not next month. If you go into the thrift store once or twice and not finding what you're looking for, don't immediately give up. I don't know where that came from. Like why are people's expectations so high? I personally been doing this for a decade and I don't have the same expectations as people who are just starting. Like I don't get discouraged when I don't find good things. I don't get discouraged when an item that I bought, I have to lose money on because I made a mistake. It's just part of the game, part of learning. So I want to empower you guys right now to think of it as a stepping stone and you shouldn't have any expectations at all. You're buying something, the market's going to yield what it's going to yield for the item. Hopefully you made a profit. Go to, the, go to the next thing. So I appreciate you guys. Please join our Patreon group if you want to be around like-minded people. Maybe you need to be surrounded by people who do have a positive mindset and they can really help you get out of this funk. But I'm kind of tired of people being discouraged after barely making an effort. So appreciate you guys. Until next time, make progress daily.